something I want to tell you that I've been telling myself is Jesus's blood covers all. Jesus's blood is sufficient. Yes, you made a mistake. Yes, you're going to keep making mistakes. But God is not shocked by your humanity. Repentance is turning back to God. Y'all, what I love about the Bible is it's filled with a bunch of misfits. It's filled with adulterers. It's filled with murderers. It's filled with stupid people. <laughs> Can you say that about people in the Bible? A lot of the stuff that's in there was just stupid. It was like, really? We look at it and we're like, we're, like Peter denouncing Jesus. Really, Peter? Really? It's so easy to look at someone else's mistake and say, I could never. But we do with our own thing. And that's what I love about our God. Jesus didn't just die once. He died once and for all. I believe every single person has a ministry. Ministry isn't just for preachers and it's not just for pastors. It's the way you shine the light that God gave you through his spirit in all spaces that he's trusted you to walk. That means you on your college campus. That means you at your corporate job. That means you in high school. That means you with your friends at the bar or the restaurant. That means you wherever you are, you have the responsibility to shine God's light light in that space and you get the chance to friend you are beautiful you are worthy and you are made to shine thursday happy my heart to yours thursday um y'all it's been a weird day it's been a weird day and it's so funny because hold on we're gonna fix this i did this in my other video got some comments on it i'm so sorry Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I know that was awful. That was awful. But the, I, I like was messing with my computer before this and I made it all blurry. So it was bothering me. But all that to say, um, it's been a weird day. I, do you ever go through seasons in life where Things that didn't used to bother you, all of a sudden, you were so bothered by them. Or things that didn't used to uh, convict you, you're like, oh my gosh, I'm so convicted by that. Great example. The other day, I was um, talking with a group of friends, and I, I don't know if I'm just in a very overthinking week but i was talking to my friend she she's dating this new guy who's so cute and i said something that i don't i didn't mean as a bad thing i actually meant it as a great thing but looking back i'm like oh i could see how one would not think that was a good thing to have said and it's all i could think about for like 46.5 hours and I just, I don't know if you're like me, but I go through seasons where I just like overthink or I'm convicted by things that maybe in the past I would have just let roll off my shoulder, but I am just fixated on them. And because of that, you start the shame spiral, right? It's like, oh, I'm a mean person. I'm a bad person. Oh my gosh, how on earth could God love someone like me? How could God use someone like me? Who am I to get on here and give you a my heart to your Thursday message when I think I said something mean to my friend the other day? That's how my brain works, at least. And to make matters even more interesting, to just show you how much I've been wrestling with this, um, I, tomorrow I'm filming this, this thing for this like Christian talk show. And I say this to you because this is like so real. I, this weekend when I, when I said that thing to my friend that I was like, I think that that was actually really mean. And I, I didn't mean for it to be really mean. What happens is like we, we sometimes we do things and then we feel like we're not qualified to actually talk about God or even to spend time with God. We think that sometimes because of our mistakes, whether we knew we were making that mistake and continued to make that mistake or whether we didn't even realize we we're making a mistake and super convicted after we did that thing. It's like, who am I to get in the Bible? Who am I to have a devotional time? Who am I to set up a Bible study with my friends? In my case, who am I to hop on this Christian TV show tomorrow? I said something mean on Sunday. You know, like you just begin to feel so not worthy. And I think that's such the enemy playing 
The enemy is so good at the first part of the gospel message that we are sinners in need of a savior. We are people that fall short, make mistakes, will stumble and stumble and stumble. This is true. And the enemy is really good at that part of the gospel story. What the enemy is not good at is reminding us of the full gospel story, which is that we have a savior. We have a savior that came and already redeemed us and already saved us. And we are a new creation in him. Does that mean we just got to like make a mean comment or make mistakes that separate us from God and not look at them and not look at what it was that we did and actually take ownership and responsibility of it and make amends? No, you, you, you need to look at that. Part of repentance is turning back to God. Well, to turn back to God, you have to know where you are in relation to what you're turning towards when it's not from God. You know what I mean? Like I think about my Pilates when we do 180 turns, right? Like if I'm going to face the left side of the room and I know I'm turning towards the left side of the room, I have to know where I am in space to know that I'm making that turn. I have to know if I'm facing the front of the room or the back side of the room or the right side of the room to be able to make that left turn. Well, if we're repenting, if we're turning back towards God, we have to know what it is that thing is that turned us away from God in the first place. So I'm not saying like you're a new creation, don't take ownership of your mistakes. I'm saying take ownership of your mistakes and move forward without shame. Because at least for me, that's what typically happens when I, and I make mistakes all the time, y'all. Like I am so, I make mistakes all the time. I make mistakes all the time. I say things I don't mean. I say things I don't think about. I say things without a filter. I am, I always joke, and you know this, I'm a, a fire kind of girl. I'm not an aim shoot fire. I like don't even aim or shoot. I'm just like, we're doing this. And sometimes it's a big whopping mistake and people get hurt or maybe I'm not considerate or I should have thought about something else and how that would have impacted a family member or a friend or whatever have you right? And then there's sometimes I make mistakes and it's not even like, I know this thing is good. It's like, it's like how Paul talks about in Galatians. I do what I know I shouldn't do, but I keep doing it and I can't do the things I know I should do. Um, I have, I make mistakes like that. We're like in the middle of the mistake that I'm making, which I know is a mistake. I still keep making it. And I feel my spirit be like, Annie, we're not doing this. We're not doing this. And I'm like, doing this and whether it's like a business opportunity um okay side note because my book's about to come out mm. in fact it already might be out by the time i publish this but a great example of this is like last year there was this instagram ad for y'all are gonna laugh at me but i really did like i was one of those people that fell for one of these scams there was this instagram ad for like make 100k in a week or whatever and I was at this point in my career where I was like, you know what? I'm good at what I do. I'm good at sales. I think I feel like I can figure this out. If this is real, I can feel like I can figure this out. Well, I put down a hefty, hefty financial investment towards something that ended up being a scam. And what's so funny is I remember in the process of that, I felt the spirit be like, Annie, we're moving too fast. This red alert, red alert. My mom calls it your spidey senses. My spidey senses were up. I was like, red alert. This is not right. And guess what? I ignored it and I kept doing it. And I knew it was a mistake as I was putting that down payment down. And I still did it. Great example of how one, I am a very imperfect human. And two, there's making mistakes when you genuinely don't think it's a mistake, but learn in hindsight, it's a mistake. And there's also making mistakes when you know it's a mistake that you're making, but you don't stop from making it. And I was talking to a friend the other day about this because I was like really struggling with something that I was going through that was a mistake that I made that while I was making it, I knew it was a mistake, yet I continued to make that mistake. For me, it's like the thing that's in my mind. For you, it might be a friendship. It's that friend that whenever you're with her, you never leave those conversations feeling better about yourself. You know what I mean? Like you never leave that dinner feeling closer to God. If anything, you feel worse about yourself. Or maybe it's a family member that keeps asking you for money and you have a really hard time putting a boundary up because they manipulate you. But every time you 
let your boundaries kind of soften and you let that person in a way they, they shouldn't, you know it's a mistake. You, you, can't, you can't help but make it time and time again. And today, for me, like I'm walking through a, a period where it's, um, it's like it's about boundaries and like not letting the same person hurt me in the same way over and over and over again. And I think what I'm recognizing is the story of shame that goes in my head. Um, and I imagine that it's the same for a lot of you. You know, it's like, okay, you're making a mistake that you know you shouldn't be doing. And then when it's done and like you let that person back into your life or you, you, you give them that money or you give them that username and password information, or you let them live on your couch for a couple of weeks, or you offer up your services for free, or you just give up your time to listen to their gossip and to their rage. Um, whatever it is, we do these things, we make these mistakes. Um, maybe it's, you let your physical boundaries go a little too far in a relationship. Maybe it's you participate in the judgment or the gossip with your friends at the lunch table. We all have these things. Maybe it's you look at the pornography again. You know, it's like, you know, it's wrong yet. You, you keep, you keep doing it. Um, maybe it's you, I don't know, you cheat on that test again because you have so much pressure from your parents to make a certain grade but you're not smart enough to make that grade and so you you rig the system a little bit because you're smart enough to know how to cheat not to pass the test even though probably smart enough to pass the test if you're smart enough to have cheat on the test without getting caught but you're like I, I i cheated i know it's a mistake and i knew i was making the mistake as i did it and something i want to tell you that i've been telling myself is jesus's blood covers all jesus's blood is sufficient Yes, you made a mistake. Yes, you're going to keep making mistakes. But God is not shocked by your humanity. Repentance is turning back to God. Y'all, what I love about the Bible is it's filled with a bunch of misfits. It's filled with adulterers. It's filled with murderers. It's filled with stupid people. <laughs> Can you say that about people in the Bible? A lot of the stuff that's in there was just stupid. It was like, really? We look at it and we're like, we're, like Peter denouncing Jesus. Really, Peter? Really? It's so easy to look at someone else's mistake and say, I could never. But we do with our own thing. And that's what I love about our God. Jesus didn't just die once. He died once and for all. Jesus didn't just die to be resurrected to release Peter of his shame spiral in his head. Jesus didn't just die and be resurrected to release Thomas of his doubt. Jesus didn't just die and be resurrected so he could release John and James and quite frankly, Bartholomew, all of the disciples that fled and doubted him. Jesus didn't just die for that. Jesus died for you and for me in our current day mistakes, in our current day struggles. He died for you and for me in the mistakes we made yesterday and the mistakes we made today and this morning and this afternoon and mid-evening and the ones we're going to make tonight and the ones we're going to make tomorrow and the ones we're going to make 62 years from now. God willing, we live that long. You know what I mean? Like Jesus died once and for all. But something I want to encourage you to recognize, because I think this is where the church, we, we miss this. And it's two very different messages. There's churches that speak truth and without love and love without truth. You know, it's like there's churches, truth without love would be basically like you suck. You need to repent. You need to do a bunch of things to get in right standing with God. Um, love without truth is you're forgiven. 
God doesn't remember sin. You're a blank slate. You don't need to look at your mistakes and own up to them at all. You're totally forgiven in Christ. And that is true. But I think where the message went awry is Jesus always spoke truth in love. It's both. And so from my friend where you feel like you're in the middle of a mistake, maybe it's one you knew you were making. Maybe it's one you didn't know you were making. I'm speaking this to myself too. It's remembering that you've got to own up to what you did. And there are consequences for things. There are. Like, and there also, there also should be. I think God's love, what's so powerful about it is, yes, he's forgiven us. Yes, he loves us. But think about a good parent. A good parent doesn't love well without consequences and without correction. I was talking to my little sister the other day, and she is a fourth grade teacher. And she was saying, like, her first year of teaching was last year. And she was like, I think what I'm recognizing now is when I don't give kids a punishment for acting up, for bad behavior, it really hurts them because they don't learn. When I punish them, it hurts me to hurt them. However, it is in their best interest because they learn. And she also brought up an amazing point, which is it's so much harder to punish a kid. And she was just telling you about how she's recognized this with like parents nowadays, like parents don't have the energy or the capacity to, to have the energy to give consequences because it takes a lot more effort to punish somebody than it does to just say yes. Like if a kid's just asking nonstop for sugar, it's so much easier just to let them have the dang candy than to say no. And here's why. And I thought about our God and how with our mistakes, it is hard for him to punish us. It's hard for him because he's the perfect parent. It's hard for him to watch us suffer the consequences. But in his kindness, he corrects us. And in his kindness, he punishes us because he is a good parent, because he is the perfect father. If he wasn't the perfect father, it would just be like, yeah, sure, eat all the candy you want. Yeah, sure, have all of this you want because I don't have the time to care to teach you how to treat this the right way, how to do this the right way. But in his perfect kindness and grace and love for you and love for me, he slows down and he corrects us by giving us a consequence for what we did. And I pray that for you and for me, we reshape our thinking around what it means to receive a consequence. What if instead of a consequence indicating that we suck or we were right, we're not good enough. It's proof that we, we are not good enough, that God hates us, which is how a lot of us think. Instead, it's our very evidence that God loves us. Consequences that God gives us is evidence of his love for us because it's what shapes us. Consequences point us back to God's love for us because consequences shape us and they correct us and they convict us back to repentance towards God. The other step of that is knowing. There is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. You don't have to feel shame in your repentance. You are forgiven. You are forgiven. Owning up to your mistake. Again, whether it's one you didn't know you were making or one you did. And then turning back to God. It's this perfect dance of taking responsibility for what you did but lathering it in love and knowing that it's because God loves you, there's a consequence, whether it's a physical consequence, an external consequence, maybe it's a hard conversation. Maybe it's um, something legal has to take place. Maybe it's just time on your calendar to talk through a meeting that you really didn't want to have. Maybe it's a friendship that isn't going to continue. Maybe it's a divorce. Maybe it's losing a, a, momentary like connection with a child. Maybe it's something with school. Maybe it's something with sports. I don't know, but maybe it's internal. 
Maybe it's just anxiety that you suffer. Maybe it's fear. Maybe it's concern. Maybe it's you stay up late at night thinking about what if this happens? What if that happens? That might be a consequence given to us out of God's kindness so that we have no appetite to do that thing again, to want that thing again, to reach for that thing again. Consequences are love. I think about the best coaches I've ever had. The best coaches I've ever had when I made a mistake, like when I kept doing something wrong in tennis or in track or whatever, the best coaches I ever had told me they care about me and then made me go run or made me go do something to pay for that mistake so that I wouldn't want to make that mistake again. But there's a difference in me running because I feel like they were going to hate me and leave me, my coaches were, if I didn't do it, versus knowing that because my coaches love me and are not leaving me and they're invested in me, they're giving this to me as an opportunity for me to be more connected to this thing they've called me to do. And God gives us consequences so that through his love, proven to us by Christ Jesus, we can know nothing can separate us from the love of God, even as we undergo a consequence from this mistake that we did. And that is so much better than having a kind of gospel message where God loves us and we never have to take ownership of any mistakes that we make. Because then we wouldn't grow. We would continue to have an appetite for things that aren't good for us. You don't know how dangerous fire is until you get burned. And so sometimes God will allow us to get burned to a certain capacity so that we don't touch the fire again out of his kindness for us. So that when we touch the fire, it's in a healthy way. It's not in a way that's going to blow us to smoke. That's our God. That's how much he loves us. Mistakes, sin, whatever you want to call it, it separates us from God. And when you really feel like for me, when I make mistakes, like when I say something that I think is mean, or when I when I go through a period where I've sinned, and granted, we sin every day. I like you sin a lot. Like, but when you go through things where you feel really convicted about your sin, the worst, the worst consequence. Like the worst consequence is feeling far from God. And that's where what Jesus did for us on the cross takes full effect. Because yes, you've sinned. But when you repent and turn back to God, God never left you. And we know that because of what Jesus did on the cross. And that's the beauty of what Jesus did on the cross. You can feel far from God, but you're not. And not because of you, but because of God and what God did. And so for my friend, feeling far from God, you are as close to God as your next prayer to him. And this thing you're going through can bring you closer to him. Because you can recognize, I don't want to be far from God. And you can repent in love. To my friend that has no idea what I'm talking about. One day you will. And you'll come back to this. And you'll need to be reminded, your mistakes don't define you. What Jesus did for you on Calvary defines you. And through that, each time we make an, a mistake, because God's not shocked by our humanity. If he was shocked by our humanity, I think he'd be, he would have never anticipated to need to send Jesus to save us, which all throughout the Old Testament it points to the Savior. God had it figured out from all along. When you make mistakes, God isn't shocked by your humanity. And it is an invitation to grow deeper in your relationship with your Heavenly Father. Because it helps cleanse your palate from an appetite for things that separate you from him. And that's my prayer for you. 
is that you look at mistakes and consequences as opportunities that God is using to cleanse your palate from an appetite of anything that's going to separate you from him. God, we make mistakes. We hurt people. We hurt ourselves. People hurt us. We're humans. And you're not shocked by that humanity. And Lord, right now, I pray in Jesus' name for the person that just feels far from you. I pray that they know that there is nowhere they could run. You tell us that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor demons, nor things to come, nor things now. I'm messing up the Bible verse, God. But basically, nothing can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. That doesn't excuse us from taking responsibility of our mistakes. But that does inform us that there is no mistake that can take us away from you. You are our father. You hide us in your quiver. You give us strength to look at what we've done and grow better for it and grow deeper in our relationship with you for it. Father, I pray that we speak truth and love in ourselves and to others. And when we make mistakes, it's not if we fall, but it's how we fall. And I pray that we fall into you each time we fall. In Jesus' name. And I hope that this blessed you and encouraged you, reminded you that God gave you a unique light and it is your job to shine it in this world because we need you to. That being said, if you were blessed by this message and you can think of anybody else that also needs this type of encouragement, do me a favor, hit like, hit subscribe, Leave me a comment. Uh, it helps me out a lot and helps this message that I do believe God gave my heart to share with the world gets out. I hope you have such an amazing rest of your day.